guazzetto with beans. All right, I have the first batch of the pork round, just like that. And this is one of those comfort foods. Pork braising with tomatoes, with beans, that's comfort food. Let's put the rest in. Okay. Now the meat, pork, this is simple pork. You can use uh, country style pork ribs, you can use regular ribs. These are actually from the top shoulder. They're very good for a sauce like that. Okay, let's leave it like that to brown. Let's get the celery ready. And you know, I want sort of pieces that will stay in because this is gonna be kind of with beans and these vegetables all in there. And uh, it's a stew, a chunky stew with beans. Sounds good, it's, it is good. And I want the vegetables to be a nice size so that they remain, so they don't disintegrate, okay? And as you can see, all these bits and pieces in here are great to make the sauce. So we will continue to do just that. Let's put in all of the vegetables, the carrots, the celery, the onion. And now I will begin with the seasoning. Let's put the bay leaves in there, some thyme. Some salt, just the vegetables, but I'm measuring. I'm not over salting anything. So let's put a little peperoncino, a little spice to all of this. Okay. Let me add some wine just to kind of loosen up all those little bits and pieces. Okay. The wine, whenever you cook with wine, good wine, decent wine, doesn't have to be the best. But cooking wine is no good. Too much salt, too much of everything. It's a regular wine that you drink or that you have left over that you didn't finish. It's great. So white wine, because although with pork, red wine goes okay, but it changes the color or whatever. I want the brightness of the tomato. So I think the alcohol has dissipated. And uh, of course, we want the flavor and the acidity of the wine. Let's put back th the meat. The pork, all these juices as well. Let that cook a little bit. The tomatoes, here I have San Marzano tomatoes. What is good about San Marzano is that it is thin skin, a lot of pulp, not too much juice and not too many seeds. So the sauce is sweeter. And I always get the whole one and then I squash them with my hands or you can have a food mill and squash them and then you make your marinara, you add them to your sauces. So I think we're down at the base. I'm gonna add the tomato. And you know how I am, I like to slosh all everything so make sure I don't lose anything. Okay. And you're saying, gee, Lydia, you're putting a lot of water. But keep in mind that the pork has to cook now and then we'll add some beans to this. So you need that liquid, you need that sauce. And bring it back to a vigorous boil. And then you lower it a little bit and let it perk away. Because you know, each cut of meat is different and cooks a little different. So with a fork, just go in and you test, test the piece. And when the meat, it sort of detaches from the bone, then it is done. All right, it's bubbling. I'm gonna lower it just a little bit to simmer, and in about an hour, an hour, 20 minutes, we'll add the beans, and dinner is done. Welcome, you're in my library with me. This is that special place that I read all of your emails, photos, whatever you send me, I read it, and then I answer. So here is a photo from Jim and Elizabeth. Let's see what they want. Your show inspires me. I saw you make beef guazzetto and told my wife that I could imagine how it would taste just by watching you make it. I like to make it and put it in the fridge overnight. It is much better heated up the next day. And you are right. In the refrigerator, it rests, it absorbs, 
and it is great the next day. Okay, so let's look at the image you sent me too. Pasta with beef guazzetto looks great. Cavatappi, nice grated cheese on top. It looks like I made it, absolutely. Good job. Oh, and here you serve it. Is that polenta underneath? I hope it is because I like it with polenta. Beautiful job. Bravi tutti e due. Enjoy cooking and keep on cooking Lydia's recipe. Thank you for the photos. This is just at the right spot. Let's see. The meat is soft, it's off the bone. And so it's time to add the beans. Just drain them from the can. Now, could you put chickpeas in here? Of course. Or black beans? Yeah, it sort of completes the whole meal. I'm going to pick up and I'm going to let the beans absorb some of the sauce. This looks delicious. I have some bread here. There's kind of a slang that's puchare. Puchare means to dunk. With a sauce like that, you need some good bread and you dunk. A little bit for Lydia. And then we do for you, for you, for you. So, always with a little plate here. A little rib with some meat on it and here is some more meat. So now, I'm gonna collect some of the vegetables and the sauce and just make it happen, just like that. Let's make another. And you know, I am sort of delicately piling it up for you, but at home, you just bring this big pot on the table with a spoon or a ladle and let everybody just help themselves. So you can see how this is a great dish to make for yourself, your family, and you still have some left over, and then to bring it to your neighbors. Now this one looks good. A little bit of parsley, that's nice. And that's nice. And where's Lydia's plate? Ay, ay, ay. Piece of meat and vegetables. Now I'm gonna make my own little plate here with some good bread. So I can tell you how good this really is. Puchare. That's number one. Let's try the sauce. Puchare. Mm. Delicious. I can cut it with a fork. That's where you want it. Delicioso. Buonissimo. The flavor of meat being braised in a tomato sauce, the cannellini beans, the carrots, the celery. It's a symphony. One pot. That's all it takes, so make it.